Active transport helps plant roots absorb the mineral ions that they need to grow. It also happens in the human digestive system. Today, we're going to look at what this process is and how it works. Download your free study along workbook for this video and others in the cell biology topic. Just visit emmaditichi.com for your free copy. Using the diagrams on the left, can you work out what active transport is? Pause and have a go. Well, hopefully you've spotted that this time around the arrow is reversed. So substances are moving from where they are in a low concentration to where they're a high concentration, i.e. against the concentration gradient. You might also have spotted that this movement is taking place across a partially permeable membrane, just like osmosis. Because active transport moves substances against the concentration gradient, it requires energy, and this energy comes from respiration. Can you remember the name of this organelle where respiration happens? Yep, it's a mitochondrion. Well done if you remembered that. Before we move on to the definition, we'll look at an example, as it will help us understand the process of active transport in the terms of the keywords dilute and concentrated. So here we've got a plant root, and in the soil around it, there are mineral ions. These are in solution, and plants need to absorb them so that they can grow properly. Often plants are in soil that has a low concentration of mineral ions, and because the solute is low, we say it's a dilute solution. Inside the plant roots, however, there are quite a lot of mineral ions, so a lot of solute, or a high concentration, which therefore means it's a concentrated solution. In active transport, the mineral ions move from the dilute solution in the soil into the more concentrated solution in the root hair cells. Moving against the concentration gradient requires energy from respiration in the root hair cells. This allows the plants to continue to grow even when they're in poor quality soil. Returning to our definition, we can now say that active transport moves substances from a more dilute solution to a more concentrated solution, i.e. against a concentration gradient. This requires energy from respiration. Another common example of active transport is in the small intestines. If we zoom in on these, we can see that they are absorbing dissolved food molecules, for example, glucose. That's the little yellow molecule there. Glucose is very important as it can be used in respiration to carry out lots of processes in your body. So the body wants to absorb as much of it as possible. And to do this, it uses active transport. If we zoom in a little further, we'll see how this works in the small intestines. So over here, we can see we've got a low concentration of glucose as there is less of it. Therefore, this is the dilute solution. Inside the blood vessels, we've got a high concentration of glucose and therefore this is called the concentrated solution. Your body is able to move the glucose from where it is in a dilute solution to where it is in a more concentrated solution. And this allows it to move the glucose against the concentration gradient, bringing it inside your bloodstream and transporting it to tissues where respiration can then take place. Okay, now it's time for the quick questions. Pause the video, give them a go, and then press play when you're ready to go over the answers. Take your time. Okay, number one. A plant has an average magnesium ion concentration of 0.3 milligrams per liter in its root hair cells. Complete the table below by naming the process that would take place to absorb the magnesium ions if it were placed in pots of soil A, B, and C. So let's take a moment to look at this table. The method of ion absorption can only possibly be diffusion or active transport. It can't be osmosis as we're not moving water. So we can see there's 0.3 mg per liter in the root hair cells, and we're going to need to compare this to the concentration in the soil. So let's write it down and work out which is low and which is high. 0.4 is obviously a higher concentration than 0.3, and moving from high to low must be the process of diffusion. 
as diffusion is always high to low concentration. If you didn't get that, pause the video and see if you can work out the last two. Okay, so we're just going to do the same thing for soil B and we'll take our 0.3 from the root hair cells and write it beside it and then work out which is high and which is low. Well, 0.1 is obviously a lower concentration than 0.3. So this time the ions will be moving from a low concentration in the soil to a high concentration in the root hair cell. And low to high is active transport as it's against the concentration gradient. Soil C is a weird one. 0.3 and 0.3 are the same concentration. But if we think about it, diffusion can't possibly work because diffusion always moves it from high to low concentration. Therefore, our only option is active transport. And if you think about it, as soon as any of those magnesium ions move from the soil into the root hair cell, it's going against a concentration gradient. Well done if you got that. And number two, how is this root hair cell adapted for active transport? Well, it's got many mitochondria, those little pink organelles, to release the energy needed to move substances against a concentration gradient during active transport. You could also have mentioned that the energy is released in the process of respiration. It's always good to have that extra detail. How did you do on the questions? Mitosis and the cell cycle is up next. And if you find this video useful, check out my channel. I've got loads more videos to help you revise. Thank you for watching and bye.